Act 3, Before the Phonograph, our quest for sounds recorded before 1877. As I noted earlier, Edison could have recorded the elevated railroad sounds onto foil and played them back in his lab, but he recorded them onto paper because he wanted to examine them visually. This was not a new idea. Airborne sounds had been traced onto paper since the 1850s by a machine called the phonautograph. Throughout the 1860s and 70s, any well-appointed cabinet of acoustical instruments required a phonautograph to capture and study the qualities of airborne sounds. When we began our quest, we didn't know if any phonautograph recordings from the 1860s or 70s survived. Of course, we'd heard of this Frenchman, Edward Leon Scott de Martinville, who invented the phonautograph that the instrument maker Rudolf Koenig sold from his atelier in Paris. We knew that Leon Scott, as he signed his name, had applied for a patent on his invention in 1857, and that he updated his application in 1859. His earliest machine, from 1857, recorded on a flat sled that moved along a tabletop. His 1859 machine recorded on a revolving cylinder, and in this form, Scott's phonograph eerily anticipated phonographs of the future. With the help of Valerie Marshall and Steve Galizia of the French Patent Office, we made high-resolution digitizations of Scott's patent documents so that we could translate and study them closely. There are two phonograms in the patent applications. Unfortunately, they yield no voices. However, the patent documents themselves give us tremendous insight into the sources of Scott's inspiration. <laughs> 